RC with Adam is brought to you in part by these super awesome people. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and today we're going to be taking a look at this little 3 inch Cinewhoop that I built. And honestly, this did not turn out super great. So don't take this as a classic perfect example of a Cinewhoop. But today we're going to be looking at the kind of the differences between flying it with ducks and without ducks. Now this is just a little informal non-scientific test. But first we're going to take a look at it with ducks and I'm using the iFlight Nazgul uh, propellers which I have found that those are the best ones I've tried so far. Pretty good, uh, pr pretty smooth as well as having a good amount of, of thrust. Um, and so I'll just tell you right now, I think this thing flies pretty poorly and it flies even worse uh, with the ducks. So you will see uh, as, as we do a flight here with the ducks, you'll see it kind of like bobble and kind of just wobble and it's just it's just not smooth and uh speaking of smoothness the uh hero 8 is what i'm using to film this and it is set to uh well it's set to 2.7k and i think it's a gopro color and um some other stuff but the main thing is that it is boosted stabilization so it's set to wide field of view boosted stabilization so even with this stabilization we're still getting like some weird wobbles and stuff so anyway uh here's this first flight with the ducts enjoy and then we're going to take the ducts off and see how it flies All right, I just took off the props and let's see how this thing flies. It looks so much smaller, for sure. It really occurred to me that for this type of flying, like for outdoor flying where you're not flying around houses and that sort of thing, you don't even need the ducts anyway. And also I think that unless the ducts are actually working as ducts, purposes of achieving greater thrust, then they're probably making it worse. In which case we could just have like prop guards or like a ring something um so let's give this guy a try 
just as it is like this. crash report here so the GoPro is fine all that stuff is good um, and of course the first time I crash is when I take the ducts off of here which kind of do add some strength to the arm but it looks like it totally just landed right on this arm and this motor this back one really caked all this stuff with mud I guess that's something. I mean, you know, that wouldn't have happened with the mud in there if I'd, if it had had a duct. The duct might have broken, maybe. But I think that was a good flight, though. It felt like a good flight. I felt I felt way better flying the five inch through the trees like that. Um, because you know, in terms of the height, this thing is just as tall as a five inch, if not taller. You know, going through little gaps in the branches and stuff. There's not really any advantage. There would have been an advantage with the ducts because it probably would not have caught the propeller. Um, it does look like right here, it looks like one of the uh, wires got squished or had been squished, possibly because it was under the, the duct and I didn't realize it. I thought I'd made sure that they weren't there, but I guess they're not. I will say flying with this, it, it just feels like just it feels very wobbly and it feels I feel it felt like I was getting a lot of drift with when I had the ducts on here felt like I was getting a lot of drift like from, just from wind like light wind so it actually didn't feel like that stable I'm thinking about maybe a bottom mounted battery maybe a bottom mount battery would help 
the thing is, when you do a bottom mount battery, like with this configuration, you're going then you you make your overall quadcopter height really tall because you've got the GoPro all the way at the top and then the battery all the way underneath there. But if that's what has to be done for the stabilization, maybe that's good. You know, another thing that's kind of interesting actually is like the the concept of what if the GoPro was underneath, you know? Or check this out, right? So basically, all of that, if you once you put the GoPro underneath and this underneath, what you are essentially doing is this. This right here. Of course, obviously the GoPro would be kind of pointed flat or more up. But that's basically what you're doing. And that's an interesting idea. I think. I think that it's funny, it seems way taller like this. Or, yeah, but it's really not. It's exactly the same. So this has been a, uh, well, it's been a, a learning build, for sure. I've learned a lot. Educational build. Not super great in terms of, like, trying to make it, like, an instructional build for other people. Definitely. Yeesh. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe you found this helpful. I don't know, but if you did, hit that like button. Maybe consider subscribing to this channel if you like what you see and you want to see more. As always, leave me a comment if you have any questions about this. Thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you again very soon.